Welcome everyone to another episode of Dr. Bauer Phipps Explains How to Do Your Homework. Um, here I'm talking about the answers to this uh, VSEPR shapes worksheet. This was like a little lab that you did. It's the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That's what VSEPR stands for. And it means that because electrons are negatively charged, if you have two negatives near each other, they repel each other, right? Same charges repel. So negatives and negatives say, go away. Um, so you went to the simulation to, uh, to try it out. Hopefully it worked on your computer. Uh, we went to the model part and you played around and made sure that all these boxes were checked. Molecule geometry, electron geometry, and bond angles, all those were here. And you played around with it, added in a couple more things. Ooh, interesting. Lone pairs. Ooh, wow. Um, so then you went back to your homework and said, aha, what questions do I need to answer? We're playing with the simulation and asking what happens to the position of existing atoms as you add in another atom. So let's let's see what happens. So we have these two. Um, we're adding in more. They're 180 degrees apart. And I add in more. Oh, now they're 120 degrees apart. I add in more. Now they're 109 degrees apart. 90 degrees apart. Oh man, it looks like looks like they're all trying to be as far apart from each other as possible, but that means that the bond angles get smaller. So they get closer to together as they get squished in there. So let me add that to our sheet. Adding in more atoms means that the bond angles get smaller, right? Started out at 180 and went to 120, 90. The atoms get closer together. It's kind of like putting more and more students into a classroom during social distancing. If more students are there, they have to be closer to each other because the space is limited. But what happens if we add in a lone pair instead? Let's see. So I'm gonna take away some of these things. I started out with those ones. If I add a lone pair, huh, the same thing happens. It went from 180 to 120 to 109 to 180 there. If I add in more of these, if I add in more um, atoms, these angles get smaller there too. So you can see that kind of the same thing happens, right? These lone pairs, even though they're not actually an atom, they act kind of like other atoms there too. Hmm. Let me write that down. So you saw when I added in those lone pairs, it means that the existing atoms also get squished together more. It's the same effect as the number one above. So let's check and see what's happening next. Question number three says, are the effects of number one and number two similar? Hey, yeah, yeah, it was the same effect. Um, why could this be the case? Let's think about it. So one and two are similar because the um, the atoms get bonded in. But if you think about these, remember, these are representing atoms. And atoms have protons and electrons. So it's sort of like they have electrons on the outside, and these also are electrons. So it doesn't matter if it's just electrons by themselves or if it's the atom that has electrons around it. All of them repel each other because all of them contain negatively charged electrons. So let me write that in over here. So when we added in either lone pairs of electrons or an atom that also has electrons on it, it creates more areas with negative charge. Negative charges repel other negative charges. So both atoms and lone pairs will repair, will repel the existing atoms that are there. So everything gets squished together more when more things are added. And so that's why this next statement in bold says, we can think of a bond or a lone pair of electrons as a domain of electrons. Single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds. Those are the ones over here, right? This is our, go away electrons. This is our single bond. This is a double bond. This is a triple bond. Right, we can see these a little bit easier. That's a triple bond. That's a double bond. That's a single bond. Each of those is a domain of electrons, so they all have the same effect. So the bond angle, when we add a domain of electrons, it doesn't matter if it's uh, another one of these uh, or a lone pair, the bond angle decreases. So you can say the bond angle decreases, it gets smaller when you add a domain of electrons. But what about when we remove a domain of electrons? So if we take it out, it goes from 120 to 180. It got bigger. So we can say that the bond angle increases, it gets bigger when we removed or took away a domain of electrons. 
But what if we just push the atoms around? Can we make them get closer to each other? Let's see. So they start out at, let's do these 120. And I say, no, 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 I want these ones. These ones like each other, right? That they, they wanna be closer. What's, hmm, I can sort of push it, but then it goes back to 120. No, 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 I want you to be right next to that one. Smaller, smaller. No, oh, I can't. It always goes back to that bigger shape. So what we saw is that the atoms cannot be forced into a different shape. Even though I tried, the atoms always went back after their original position after I let go. This is because electrons are repelling each other. And the electrons want to be as far from each other as possible. So that's the whole point of this. Valence shell, electron pair, repulsion. All the electrons are negatively charged, so they repel each other and want to be as far away from each other as possible. So now we looked at some shapes. You saw that there, um, when you had one central atom and then one thing attached, um, the molecular geometry, right, you went through and made each of these things. The molecular geometry here, right, I'm, what am I doing? Here we go. This one. No, nope, can't do it. The molecular geometry here is linear, right, and the electron geometry is linear. So you wrote those names right over here. The molecule was linear and that was also linear. And if we had two things connected, right, two bonds, here we go. This is also linear, and the electron geometry is still linear. Both of these were linear. Both of these were linear. And now I'm going to have those two atoms attached to the purple one, and then one or two unshared pairs of electrons. So I have two things attached, and I add in one unshared pair. Ah, it changes to bent if it's one attached, or trigonal planar if I'm looking at just the electron geometry. See how that's on a plane and makes a triangle. If I add in another one, then it changes the electron geometry, but not the molecule geometry. So tetra, remember, is the prefix that means four, here we go. So here, my molecule geometry is bent because that's just taking into account the atoms that are there. The molecule is bent. It looks like an elbow macaroni or an elbow from an arm. And then this could either be trigonal, planar, or tetrahedral. Okay, so that's if there are two things attached. If there are three, I'm going to take away these lone pairs. Just three things. Here we go. Trigonal planar for both. We have ooh, a triangle on a plane. Good job, geometry. A plane means a flat surface. Here's my flat surface. Trigonal planar for both of them. And then we went to three things attached with one electron domain. Let's see, three things attached and then one lone pair. Aha, trigonal planar, because if I look at these ones, it's making sort of a triangle pyramid, trigonal pyramidal, pyramidal. But this shape, with, that includes the electrons has one, two, three, four things attached. That's why it's tetra, here meaning four. All right, and then finally, if we have four things attached but no other electron domains, so moving around, move, taking away that lone pair and adding one more bond in there, um, now we have four things attached. The molecule is a tetrahedral and the electron geometry is tetrahedral because there's no other lone pairs to make it complicated. So let's put that in too. Okay, so now we've completed this chart for number seven, right? We put in the molecular geometry and the electron geometry. Um, so it says, what do you think three atoms are in a central pair and zero unshared pairs is called trigonal planar? What does a planal part mean? So that's the one here, trigonal planar. So we talked about that a moment ago. Trigonal means that it's a triangle and planar is the geometry term planar right? Not like an airplane, but a plane, like a flat surface. Um, that's what it means. So trigonal means that there are three sides or three angles, you know, like a triangle. The planar part is uh, geometry. It means a flat surface. Flat surface. 
Trigonal planar means that it's a flat triangle. It's different than a triangle pyramid that has a different name, right? That's the trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal, right? Trigonal pyramid, trigonal planar. Um, if we have two atoms, how do we know which one is going to be correct? Just two atoms bond at the center thing. What else do you need to know about it? So let's go back. If we have two things, then it's probably going to be linear, or it could also be bent, right? I'm going to take this electron geometry off. It's either going to be linear or bent. How do I know? If it has, it still has two things attached. It still has two atoms attached, but there's an extra lone pair. So the lone pair is going to tell you whether two things attached is going to be bent or linear. If there's no lone pair, it's going to be linear. If there's a lone pair, it's going to be bent. Let me write that in. All right, so if there's, uh, it depends on whether there's a lone pair or multiple lone pairs. If there's only two atoms around the center atom, but there's no lone pairs, then it has to be linear. If there's two atoms and there are any lone pairs, it has to be bent. So those lone pairs make the difference between linear and bent. A similar thing happens if you have three atoms around the center atom, right? If we have um, three atoms, then we can see, here we go, we've got our trigonal planar, right, triangle on a plane. But as soon as you add in a lone pair, it pushes those out of the way. It goes from being a flat plane to a pyramid. So those electron pairs, those lone pairs that aren't bonding, affect the shape, even though they're not a part of the molecule geometry, right? If we're looking at all the electrons, then it's tetrahedral, one, two, three, four. But if we're just looking at the molecules, the actual atoms that are there, it's a triangle, pyramid, right? It's not flat. They've been pushed down a little bit. So let's write that in over here. It depends on whether there's a lone pair or multiple lone pairs. If there's three atoms around a center atom with no lone pairs, it's trigonal planar. If there's three atoms and a lone pair, then it becomes a pyramid, a trigonal pyramid. So trigonal planar, triangle on a plane, if it's flat. A trigonal pyramid, if you add in that extra electron domain, it makes a difference. Molecule and geometry is a little bit more subtle. So molecule and electron geometry, molecule takes into account just the atoms that are there, right? This is a trigonal pyramid because you have one, two, three things attached, right? It's a trigonal pyramid. See how it's not flat. But electron geometry takes into account the lone pairs as well, all right? So that's why it's a little bit different. If you have, oops, taken away, not add more. If you have two of them here, it's bent. But if you add in that electron pair as part of its name, then it becomes a trigonal planar, right? This is this becomes the third part of the triangle, one, two, three. So that's the difference here. Let's do that. So remember, the difference between molecule and electron geometry. Molecule, and ele molecule geometry just looks at the shape of the atoms alone, right? Whether they're lone pairs or not, it's just looking at the atoms. Electron geometry tells us that the lone pairs are included in that shape. So the lone pairs do affect the molecular geometry. They're just not included in the name. All right, so then the last one to figure it out. A molecule has two double bonds on the central atom and no lone pairs. So should it be, what's the molecule geometry? And then explain. Um, so two double bonds on the center atom. So that means we're going back up to our chart. Two atoms with no unshared pairs. That means it's going to be linear. So two double bonds, um, the molecule geometry is going to be linear. The molecule geometry here um, is the same as the electron geometry, because in both cases, if there's no lone pairs, then both of these have to be the same. All right, so if it has two double bonds in the center atom and no lone pairs, what will be the electron geometry and the molecule geometry? So. Two double bonds, no lone pairs. I think that both of them are going to be linear because it doesn't matter how many bonds connect each electron domain. If there's two things connected, it's either going to be linear or bent. So if we have, let's make that happen. If we have a double bond here, a double bond here, yep, linear and linear. It just depends if there's a lone pair. If there's a lone pair, it becomes bent. But if we take them away, it's just linear. Yeah. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thank you.